Okay guys, I am back. I got the first video in the series hashtag get to know a witch from Jen the taxidermy witch. I got it uploaded. It's questions one through six. So now we're going to start with question number seven. And it says, are you out of the closet or in? And if you're in, how will you personally come out? I don't think that's exactly how she worded it, but I just wrote down the questions so I could write out my answers. But um, in my muggle world, I am a pre-K teacher in the Bible Belt in the South. Um, so there's not a lot of tolerance or acceptance for spiritual paths other than the Christian, you know, conservative, you know, you know. So, um, it is very possible that I could lose my job, um, if people found out. So, um, in my outward life. I am still forced to be very much in the broom closet. Um, however, um, this is a free country and we do have spiritual, um, religious freedom. And so, you know, I'm just kind of like, I'm honoring my grandmother. I am doing what feels right to me. My home is definitely a reflection of my witchiness. I have pentagrams and runes and, you know, all kinds of witchy things all over. So if anyone comes to my house, they're going to see, they're going to know. Um, and all my friends know, like, I collect crystals and I'm into, like, herbal remedies and that kind of stuff. So I'm sure they kind of know that, hey, she's a little bit, she's a little bit witchy. She's a little bit different. But, um, I don't know how people would react if they found out, yes, I am an actual practicing witch. And I wonder how much it would matter to them that I am a Christian witch. Like, they would not understand that. Like, and it's a hard path, you know. I understand, like, even witches many times say, oh, you can't be a Christian witch. You know, they're two different, um, they're two totally separate paths. Um, not for me. We each make our own path. It's been surprisingly easy for me to blend the two. Um, not that it didn't have its challenges, but you know, every, every path does. So anyway, I wonder about that. Um, and the only thing holding me back from just being totally free and open is my job. And I love my job. It is the most amazing job ever. And, um, I understand, like, you know, I kind of dress a certain way and everything as a professional. And so I don't really have too much of a problem, you know, keeping that side of me, you know, more introverted. Um because I am a professional. Like, I have tattoos and everything, um, but at work, I have to keep them covered, even though they're just flowers, you know, and kitty paws on my feet, you know, but that's just a respect thing for different, um, different views of the, the families and the parents of my students and everything. So that's no problem. Um, but I can't wait for the day. I think I have like six more years until I could do a 20 year retirement. And if I do decide to retire in six years, oh, it's on. Oh, let me tell you, my poor husband, he doesn't know what he signed up for because I'm going to go some kind of crazy. I don't know what color hair I'm going to have. I don't know what kind of tattoos I'm going to have. I'm going to be all tatted up. I'm going to be such a hippie witch and it's going to be great. So I have that to look forward to. So I'm kind of, um in the closet and out, you know, I'm, I'm respectfully introverted with my practice in the real world. Um, but I put my face on my YouTube videos, um, and it's very possible that people could find me. And if they do, that's fine, you know, um, because I don't have anything to be ashamed of. I don't have anything to hide, you know, um, so if there would be a problem, it wouldn't be with me because, I am truly, deeply, um, authentically me, and I love God, and I love Jesus, and I love my life, and I know it's all, it's, it's all gonna be a great balance, so, um, that's kind of where I am now. 
<laughs> and the biggest thing was um, having my mama, you know, find out that I'm a witch. Um, as we always joked, you know, oh, my grandma's a witch. But, you know, yeah, she actually was. Um, and my, my mom is like a very, very wonderful, very strong Christian woman. Um, but I think, you know, as we, we age and everything, we learn that there's just more to it. Like we learn not to accept the brainwashing, you know, and we learn to think for ourselves. So I think that's where she is and she's cool with it. So that was my biggest thing. And so now it's all good. All right, so let's move on to number eight. In two sentences, explain my practice to a non-believer. Okay, so I don't know if I can do it in two sentences. But everything in the world has both a physical presence and a spiritual presence. And that is seen through vibrations and energy and no matter what religious path you're on or whatever if you study and you learn and some do have more of an innate ability for it but you can learn to weld that energy you can learn to tune in to that vibrational that vibration <laughs> and you can use that and that is what we call magic um, but it, it's actually all very scientific um, so that's basically what it is in a nutshell without adding any spirituality or anything any dogmas to it that's the basis of it is just the energy and the vibration so that's what I would say so number nine, math or art. Which one are you better at and which one do you enjoy more? Let me just tell you, math is the devil. Math is evil. It is my enemy. <laughs> Not really, but I'm so horrible at math. Like my brain doesn't work that way. Um, I was always, I was in honors English. I could always do English and writing and, you know, grammar and all that just perfectly. But my brain is not wired for math. And um, to get through college, the only way I was able to pass my math class was with my husband's help. And let me just tell you, that man, he was drunk. He was so drunk. And he was helping me with my math and doing better than most anyone in the class. Like, his brain is just wired for math. It's amazing. And here I am, like, so studying and just trying my hardest. And I can't even, like, comprehend what he can totally comprehend even just drunk. So it's amazing. So I owe it all to him for being able to help me through my math course. <laughs> it just would not happen. But I do sense discovering sacred geometry and the phi ratio and how everything in the physical realm is trying to get ever closer to that, that perfect golden ratio. You know, I do have a newfound respect for math. Um, and I see how the patterns of math are the building blocks to life. Um, but some of us are meant to understand that secret and some of us are more meant to understand like just the beauty of creation. And I think that's how my, um, my brain works. So anyway, um, I don't love math, but I love the, the idea of math for other people. <laughs> so anyway, number 10, music. Um, are you musically inclined? Do you have a favorite instrument and why? So I've never been musically inclined. Like I have no rhythm. Um, I tried like the recorder <laughs> or whatever in junior high and did not have any luck with it. But since starting my, my spiritual path, um, I do have trouble meditating. So, um, I started with the the shamanic drumming and I absolutely love it like I'm able to meditate it taps me into spirit um, and so I'm learning I'm learning that so I'm really really proud of that um, and I have y'all see my videos about my beautiful drum and then I have my little my little hand drum there and then a, a smaller like eight inch hinnid 
beautiful hand drum so in that regard like I would love to do like drum circles and that kind of thing but I'm not a musician by any means um okay so along that line who are my top five favorite musicians well my favorite of all time uh in the whole world my favorite band is smashing pumpkins i love smashing pumpkins i'm all about like 90s alternative and they were it for me they were my life um, then I also enjoyed uh, Third Eye Blind. I love them. But Jewel is, like, she is my soul sister. Like, she sings my soul. I love her. And, um, like, for belly dance and, like, shamanic journeying and just tripping out, you know, I love Beats Antique. Oh, my gosh. Their music is amazing. And, oh, man, I would need one more to make five I don't know like I love all kinds of music um hmm I don't know maybe Goo Goo Dolls I love Goo Goo Dolls mm. but then I also like like oldies like Credence Clearwater Revival I love them I grew up listening to them with my mom so that's a hard one to narrow it down um so what are your favorite uh top five music genres well like i said i love 90s alternative uh 90s rock i like classic rock and punk and like i guess it's like folk music like um the um what is it like dirty south not dirty south but down south or something like the like the folky type you know kind of like sarcastic music I don't know what I'm talking about anyway I love that um my least favorite musical genres and why um if I have to pick I mean I love tidbits from all different genres there's no genre that I just absolutely hate you know because there's good and all um but I guess it would be pop just because it's just you know there's no not as much depth I like things that have a meaning and pop has a lot of like repetition and stuff that's just brainless to me but then again the beat's good so it's all good and then country but I mean not that I don't not like country I do like country um but I just had to pick so that would be my that would be my pick all right so this is a really good question so is there a song that the lyrics lyrics make 1000 percent sense to your life and why okay so there's this song from the 90s and it's really obscure and it's by leah andrione and she i had her cd i don't know if any of you listen to her but she's amazing and i can't remember the name of the song but i can sing the whole thing you want me to sing it i'm gonna sing it okay it's like she stares into the sun self-inflicted pain she sees that they're blind why does she take all the blame the rhyme has changed compulsion rules mary's little lambs are now raised by wolves a voyeur with wings flashes a cure she knows forbidden things they have a lovely lure ah, it's all right it's okay welcome to this life killing time just watching the grass grow it's all right it's okay welcome to this life don't worry sweet baby because it's over before you know persecuted she's not normal i envy her strange ways seven deadly sins sees the hour sees the day her ideas need expression her wounds never bleed her beauty lives in my eyes too bad she can't see she doesn't try i watch her spirits die but giving up the ghost do oh, i feel so good a voyeur with wings flashes a cure she knows forbidden things they have a lovely lure <laughs> God, i know i can't sing but i just love that song and like it speaks to my soul like it, every lyric is just me and my life and just the struggle of life and it's great so leandrione check it out i think it's called like it's all right it's okay anyway but that that if i had to have a theme song to my life that would be it
Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I killed y'all with my horrible singing. But it was fun. I enjoyed singing it. Like, that's the song. I'll play it, sing it, belt it out, and then immediately <laughs> go back again and do it over and over. And the people in the car with me are like, seriously? Oh, my gosh. All right. So, that was a good one. So, let's move on to number 11. It says, how do you connect with others like us in real life? So, like, okay, in real life, I have to be careful. Um, because there's so many different paths and I don't like I might notice tidbits um, that they're doing in their path but they may be doing it for a totally different spiritual reason than me um, and I don't want to give too much you know and them think I'm weird or whatever so I'll notice things about them I will kind of just keep a mental list okay this 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 and then I might like I'm not really good at like small talk in person and everything because I just need more depth and it's just agonizing so thank goodness for like social media because <laughs> I can just you know so I'll probably just message somebody and be like hey I've noticed this about you are you into this do you like this and you know be super friendly and that's that's how I overcome my insecurities um, even when I do like have to talk to someone in person is um, I have this big goofy smile and it just it disarms people and it also like oh you know it kind of it's off-putting but then it's like hey you know something there and so I can use like just over-the-top friendliness and draw people in and in that way like I kind of laugh at my insecurities and l allow them like give them permission to laugh too because it's also funny it's also good and if you can't laugh at yourself then what's the point and so that kind of helps me draw people in and get past that horrible awkward small talk stage that I hate um so I just smile <laughs> and I act goofy and silly and it's amazing so that's how I do and I message them all right I'm gonna stop it there because I see that Jen the Taxidermy Witch has gone live and so you know I have to go check that out um, and then the next one number 12 is a pretty in-depth one anyway and this video is already 17 minutes long so we'll cut it there and then I will upload this and then we'll make the next one um, sorry I'm having to do it in segments but it might be easier to watch this way so anyway thanks for sharing this magical space with me and listening to my horrible singing I love you Mwah. bye blessed be